that. I have an extremely special guest with me today. My name is Carolyn Wellman, and I've been blessed with maintaining Helene Hadsel's legacy. And today we have her granddaughter, Melissa Waters. Now, let me read you her bio because it's fascinating. Melissa Waters, she's an E-R-Y-T with a thousand. Not only loves yoga, that means um, certified yoga instructor for those of you that don't know, but she just lives yoga because the real yoga we know is off the mat. In 2002, she fell in love with health, peace, and the supreme flow in the form of Ashtanga yoga and never looked back. She got her certifications under Tej Manga at the Nama Shivaya Yoga in 2010 and, and 2011, which included a pilgrimage to India. And that's where she got the name Satya. We'll talk about that in more in a minute. Satya learned and synthesized from many other masters along the way, although currently daily life is her primary teacher and taskmaster. Well, isn't that the way it is for all of us? Drawing on her natural love for people and the consciousness that flows through all of us, she works somatically to bring awareness to the unconscious so we can authentically live as all as all of who we are. Oh, I love that. Integrated with and guided by our highest self. The postures, yogic philosophy, breath, me meditation, mudra, mantra, and nature are woven together to ignite a lasting transformation from within. Satya now shares this passion with women in the form of a powerful and relaxing personal retreat in the countryside of rural Arkansas that is curated just for you as you are in the moment. This is so wonderful. She delights in elevating the frequencies to joy through ecstatic dance, curtain, facilitating women's circles, drum circles, and simply being. Thank you so much for joining me. Now I have to ask, because your grandmother went from Helen to Helene but that was just a spiritual change it was never legal she did it because of numerology and you took on Satya which I find fascinating again spiritual but not legal and what does it mean well uh in Sanskrit Satya means um it's the principle of living your truth like being in alignment with your truth and not just your own truth it's like the highest truth that there is so we have we have our own truth which which is you know comes from our wounds and our ego and whatever else <laughs> and then there's like the real truth of things so um so it was a big they were big shoes to fill um i was honored actually to receive it and it took me many many years of of uh, getting my life in alignment with truth uh, before I could really accept it and embrace it and, and go by that. So. Oh, that's wonderful. So for the rest of the interview, when I refer to her as Satya, you'll understand why I am not calling her Melissa, because just like Helene, Helen wanted to be called Helene and we honored that I'm going to honor your uh, blessed name. I just think that is absolutely wonderful. Now you have, um, a fascinating history. So tell us about your mom and your family, like your your life and what, how you grew up and, you know, your father and your brother. And I believe you grew up in Texas. Well, I was born in Texas and my dad um, was in the oil business. And so we left Texas when I was like two and we lived in Holland for two years. Wow. And then um, Bahrain. For a year which is a little island and then um iran for four and a half years we left right before the shah was overthrown and then came back to texas for fifth grade um through high school and then i left again in uh, my junior year to go live in france for my last two years of high school and then came back so um yeah, overseas uh, living. <laughs> well, that's interesting because that really, um, I think we learn more about the world when we travel and see it firsthand than we do with what we read in books. Not that books aren't 
uh, amazing. Right. I've been an avid reader since I could hold a book. <laughs> and I know um, you too love books. But yeah, there's nothing like traveling. So that also affects how you uh, grew up and how much time you spent with your extended family, not just your mother's side, but your father's side. Yeah, we would always come back um, for the summers. You know, when the school let out, we would come back to Texas and hang out with both sides of the family and reconnect and all that sort of stuff. So, and oh. it was really, it was a really good experience, not just to, you know, see other countries. It was really just good to, it created a lot of tolerance and acceptance for um, other people so that, you know, when the news stories would come on and say these people were bad and I would kind of go, but they're not. They're like the same as me. So I don't understand that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. I didn't get to travel as much as a child, but I did as an adult. And I understand that because most people are wonderful and warm and kind wherever I've been. And I, yeah, I have the same thought. I don't understand. Yeah. So since you traveled so much, do you have... Uh, what are your memories of your uh, mother's side of the family? Um, well, we would we would always gather at Pat and Helen's um, several times during the summer. She she was a really good cook, and um, oh. Pat had a garden, so we would you know she would make stuff from the garden, and um, I don't know, just and then you know playing in the garden and she would she went through this i guess phase i don't know of of, of um, self-discovery and helping people do self-discovery so it was always kind of fun to go and um you know do all her little fun things that she that she uh was uh you know making other people do so she made the kids do it too so she would help us with contesting she would help us um, with, with, uh, intuition skills and stuff like that. So yeah, Let's it was start always with the contesting. Did you win anything? <laughs> I never did. Because <laughs> <laughs> nope. I love it as an adult. Like that's how I connected with her. Right. Was that I had written a book called you can't win if you don't enter. It's kind of obvious. And <laughs> Well, that's with anything in life, right? You don't right. apply for the job, you're not going to get it. Um, and so that's how I connected with her was through through the contesting. But I always was attracted to and had written like little bits about the, the mind process because I believe you have to think like a winner before you are. And so that's what she was teaching you. I think it's so funny you didn't win anything. Did your brother or any of your cousins, did anybody, did anybody else win? You know, I, I guess if, if they did, it wasn't highlighted. I don't really remember. No. I just remember me, no. So, which was fine because it was just fun. The creative process was fun. Oh, it so. is fun. I just think it's funny. I just love yeah. it. <laughs> now, you had told me, and I didn't write that down as one of the questions, but I think it's amazing. You told me you took the Silva method at 12. Now I've been taking it as an adult and I can only imagine how the trajectory of my life would have changed had I taken it at 12. Yeah. Um, for some reason, my Helen um, got me. She thought that was really important uh, when Laura Silva came to town that I take that class. And, um, and what I discovered was that I also had a monkey mind at 12. And so even counting backwards from three, two, one, I would get completely distracted and, um, you know, by thoughts and I would lose track in my three, two, one. <laughs> and, um, but, but getting into yoga really honed that in for me. And also practicing the Silva, but it, you know, the, the yoga highlighted why that was and what that was, because, you know, we, we swim in our thoughts and our mind and we don't really, it's like fish in the water. They don't see it. They just, 
be it. They are in it and yeah. we're in our thoughts and we have no idea. And I had no idea. So that was really the most <laughs> enlightening thing I discovered. And, and it was all, you know, you know, also fun to practice all the, um, all the techniques. And I, I was very privileged to, to be able to do that. I, I don't think my brother went through it actually. Oh, so yeah. So yeah, that's, that's fascinating because it, and especially learning from the Silvas directly, I think um, was something that's an experience, but I noticed and I'll let you tell this because I think it's very funny. Why you call your grandmother Helen and not grandma or Nana or something else? <laughs> well, I mean, it's very simple. She was clearly not old enough to be called grandmother. And so um, she just wanted to be called her name. And that's what we grew up calling her. <laughs> I just think it's, I think it's, uh, it just speaks to me of her personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go against the flow. That was, and her. it just makes me chuckle when I, because yeah. I can completely see that in yeah. in her. <laughs> so, do you think this? Well, you were traveling and whatnot. It, do you think the Silva method was your first door into that, or uh, into a more spiritual life and heading down a path that led you to yoga, or what what was your memory like what where did you start and obviously you ended up at yoga and where you are today yeah it was definitely the metaphysical I had two wonderful grandmothers uh one being extremely metaphysical and the other being extremely religious and oh. um but an angel oh. um and and so it was I just became the middle I felt like I I got the balance um of both of them and and um yeah very blessed to be in the middle of that um but yeah I guess that did kind of set me on that path of spirituality I I, I think I've always kind of been you know from even from being little some, oh. you know something inside something inside maybe mm. past lives who knows well obviously you came into that family and the dynamics for for a reason right but i it's nice to hear that you had the balance from both sides of the family um now your mom unfortunately um passed away when she was i consider it young um since we're both we, you and i were born the same year so we're in our later 50s um unfortunately your mom passed well i consider it to be young can you tell us about that? And did it affect um, your path in any way? Um, yeah, I was in college. I think I was probably about 18. She was 47 when she passed away. Um, I had gone to live with my dad who was transferred to, to France. Um, home life at the time was was not safe because of who she married and the kids and blah 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 so um my dad was very happy to you know have me and and my brother come with so we went to france and and lived there and and again would come home in the summers and see mom and one summer we came home and she said she had a brain tumor where she couldn't see it was affecting her vision mm -hmm. and um and then discovered that and then chose to have surgery and then was um not that she was not really the same after her surgery I don't know what happened like mentally there was something different about her so um what was the second part of your question about oh just how how did that because I'm I'm blessed my grandma my my mother's mother didn't pass away till she was 103 and my mom's still with us and losing a parent when you're young like 40 years ago right if I do the math properly that's a, that's you know not quite but close enough to 40 years that changes you as a person and so I assume uh, it would change your path and maybe make you seek different things um, do you think it affected like your metaphysical slash spiritual uh, 
journey because of that? Because she she became an angel in your life. Well, the angel part's a stretch, although I I mean, who knows? But she did affect it because there was because of the because the reason why I left, there was a wounding that I spent the next 40 years overcoming Mm -hmm. um, to get to where I am now. And that so that I mean, it was a gift. It was all a gift. Um, because the gift, the wound is the gift, uh, that you, it's your journey. So, um, so yeah, so now I'm, I feel like I've done all that work and I've overcome and, um, gotten my gift. So. Yeah. I think that happens to a lot of us. It's always hindsight when you see it, when you're in the muck of it and you're, you're in the middle of healing, it's hard to see. And then you get to the other side and you go, Oh, I, that's why that that happened yeah (laughs) yeah for sure yeah that's wonderful that you've been able to go through it because I know it's uh some people don't get that uh blessing so now you uh said in your bio now I we've chatted quite a bit and I did not realize that you were um creating you live about um you live in arkansas which is such a beautiful state and i had the pleasure of driving through it on the way back and and popping in and having tea with you and the but very it says brief you meeting do, you create personal retreats in rural arkansas in that s- section of the state that you uh live in and tell us about these because this sounds fascinating like i love all the things that you say that you do like kirtan and drum circles and yoga and all that, all that stuff tell us about what you're doing for other people especially it says women circles right um well i feel like this is the time for for women to come into their own and to be more authentic uh, as to who they are and to be more ex- you know self-expressing because because the programming that we were set up with was, um, you know, you don't have a voice and your voice doesn't matter and blah, 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 blah. So, um, so I care about my sisters and I do a lot in the community. What I'm doing in the community is um, I have, I have women's circles where we explore, you know, some of the, um, the goddesses and the the power of and the energy of them to bring that into our own life um, because there's latent energies that we have that we haven't really maybe tapped into so that's that's that part Um, and then the kirtan is just fun that's mantra music I play the harmonium and I'm currently putting a band you know I have a band I'm kind of formalizing who is in the band you know I I just ask people to come and play with me and um but I've been doing it for the community since I moved to hot springs um about once a month I've got one coming up next this weekend Saturday the 21st um oh, I'm I'm gonna have to plan my next trip to Arkansas to coincide because I would love to attend that. <laughs> you should it's so much fun I have a terrible singing voice, uh, but I don't care. Well, I mean, that we're all told that, too. That was one of the things I had to overcome is my, you know, I, I had purposely closed down my throat chakra oh. and um, and incrementally opened it back up. But um, so I do that and the women's circles and the drumming just for, you know, self-expression and, and getting rhythmically harmonized with people with each other and and i know that has an effect on the on the greater world um and then the retreat has been put on hold i haven't finished my um my website yet and my daughter moved in with me so um until until something shifts and i'm just you know sitting with divine timing and all that um i I'm just working with the community and my friends and stuff like that. But that is my intent to have people um, because that's what Helen did too. And it was very, 
I know that that was very beneficial. It was informal. It was, you know, people were comfortable and they got a lot of benefit just, you know, being in the presence of somebody who's got, you know, some wisdom and stuff like that. So, yeah, because she had the Delta Sciences Center. She she sold the house. They sold the house that she had won and she bought some land in Alvarado and they had two buildings on it. One was their house where Pat and Helen lived and the other was where the students um stayed because it's about an hour outside of Dallas well now it doesn't seem so far but back in the day it seemed yeah. to be way out in the middle of nowhere so there was also um, the lake house nearby oh yes that's true but uh, I didn't know she had students there I knew she had students at um at uh, the Delta Sciences Center mm -hmm. and and uh and people came there and and she talks about that but I it's amazing now because we can do it from anywhere in the world it sure has it sure has changed yeah yeah so you're gonna do the similar thing just uh where you are in your little corner of uh Arkansas which yeah, is it's just a beautiful as... it's a beautiful place to be I mean the Lake Wachita is magical because it's the water is uh, built on a bed of crystal. So it's structured and silky, silky smooth and soft uh, and so healing. And then there's crystal digs and there's bathhouses and there's hiking in the mountains and um, just so much to do uh, that, you know, beyond the yoga and stuff like that, like excursions <laughs> yeah i'll be i'll share once you get your uh website up i'll be i'll share that information for the retreats and okay thank you. next year because i still contest um <laughs> like helen did and the next annual national sweepstakes conventions in little rock arkansas so i'm planning um, hopefully there'll be a retreat or a kirtan around that time i can see that or maybe be able to come out earlier and then um, Texas is not that far. So I'll go and visit your uncle Dyke. <laughs> and I just seem to, you know, I seem to be a little somehow got to be an extended Hadsel somehow. <laughs> well, <I did> that. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating that you do all these wonderful things that I'm sure she would have done some of them had the um they've been available at that time right like she did what she did with what was available mm -hmm. and now you've elevated that because there's a whole new skill set and access to things that you have available to you mm -hmm. it's like everybody's building the family's yeah. building on mm -hmm. one another does That's your true. daughter do any of this stuff like I'm wondering if it's a generational thing well, they're both still, you know, I think they could, um, but they're, you know, they're in their 20s and they're uh, making their way. So there's plenty of time for them to 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 do that. But oh, yeah, what I did at 20 and what I did at 50 are totally different. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they're, they're, yeah, they'll, they'll figure out their own, yes. their own path and yes. it'll be interesting to see, um, where where they grow to, wasn't that the beauty of having children and watching them grow and seeing what paths they pick right mine does art yeah i have uh i have one that does art and one that does um she's she's working at a yoga retreat center in pennsylvania and and homesteads so she's doing doing gardening and stuff like that so. wow yeah that's coming back which i'm happy to see Mm -hmm. um is coming back now your brother does he do anything um spiritual like now you clearly took on the metaphysical aspects you know through through your mom from your grandmother and have that does your brother do any of that or he's not on the, does any of that he's not that's not his path no 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 he's more techno technologically gifted so oh, he's like a he, nerd. He's like a uh, computer nerd. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 50, 50. 
I'm like half nerd and half spiritual, which is <laughs> makes a great marriage for doing things like um, books and then YouTube and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and those types of things. So I understand both sides, which I find interesting because um, I think that's one of the reasons she asked me to maintain her books is because she was not techie at all. And she knew I knew how to write and she knew I knew about contesting. Yep. And I'm still winning. Yay. I haven't won my house yet. And the car. Coming. It's only a coming. delay in I results. know it's coming. It's coming. So this is, this is really wonderful. Now, um, I had someone send in a couple of questions because originally this was going to be a live stream where people could ask us questions. Unfortunately, we had technical difficulties. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and so we're recording it on Zoom. And uh, I'll ask you these questions. And then I want to talk about uh, the book behind me, which is which is interesting. Uh, so Kathy said, when did you know that your grandmother was on to something? <laughs> when you were young or after you look back on your experiences with her? Oh, no, I knew when, when I was young because she... Um... She was the only person I knew like that. Oh. You know, she was definitely one of a kind and um, had her own way about her. Uh, so, yeah, there was, it was the, you know, I don't know, five, six, <laughs> young, very young, I knew. Yeah, you can she, tell. She was you something can, special. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah, she's not like all the other adults. No, 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 no. Yeah, I think she kind of scared my dad, so. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Scared my um, ex-husband, you know, so. Oh, my goodness. Because I have a feeling she just always spoke her mind. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, you hit the nail on the head for that. <laughs> yeah, I got that from her writing. Like, I didn't get that from her personally, like her telling me that. I just, you can kind of just tell. Mm -hmm. She lost all her filters. She Or maybe she never had them. I don't know. I, I don't think she necessarily ever had them because I know that my grandmother, she didn't lose her filters till, till she was in her late 90s. And she started having a little bit of dementia and the filters were gone and the stuff was gone. <laughs> but I, I don't think she ever had them. <laughs> yeah, Rob, you're probably right. That actually is a real blessing in one way, especially in today's society. If she'd been around, I could only imagine her with a YouTube channel. Right. She'd be and censored, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Another video novel. taken down, <laughs> Helen. Um, <laughs> uh, and then Kathy also wanted to know, what did you manifest when you were with her? Like, I, I guess what she's asking, I'm going to put words in Kathy's mouth here, is when you're around somebody that is understanding, I'll say the game of life or how energy works, I think on a level that um, most of us are just figuring out later in life. Because um, I, I know that when I was reading the books or then editing, like I read this book but it took me like 20 years later before I was like, oh, that's what she meant. Like, it's really kind of deep and layered. So when you're around somebody with that kind of energy, did you find you were manifesting different around with her energy there? Well, yeah, um, she, I mean, she was plugged into the the field. And, yeah. and when you're around people like that, you get plugged into the field. Um, oh. So when she was doing her, um, when we were practicing intuitive skills and uh, stuff like that, um, I did really good. I, I mean, I, I had, I had a lot of doubts, you know, because my 90% of my other life was not like this. So when I come to when I came to visit Helen, it was always this was the focus. And so the 90 percent of my life sort of uh, won. That was the program. And then when I came, 
it took a little bit to overcome the doubt and the, you know, the programming. So yeah, it was just, you know, and that's, that's all of us really what we're, what we're here to do is to overcome ourselves. Yeah. Get into the field. Mm -hmm. That, that is fascinating. I could almost feel, um, I could almost feel what it would have been like to be, because I mean, I spent four days with her and I think her energy was so strong. I had a headache by the third day just from being it, around her. I knew it was the amount of energy that I was around. Like I knew it wasn't, you know, I was dehydrated or something. Yeah. I thought, yeah, she has a lot of energy. And I had brought, I have magnetic wristbands and a headband that I wear if I have a headache. And I, I had to sleep with them on because <laughs> I had packed them when I came yeah. down to Texas and I had to wear them because I thought, wow, she's just like, mm -hmm. it's like sleeping next to an electric pole or something. Yeah, right. Exactly. She's just into the field. So that's, that's fascinating that you were aware that, yeah, we have all these doubts and the little voice. Mm -hmm. And when you get around her, you could overcome it. Mm -hmm. That's uh, interesting. Now you had some fun uh, working on this book with her. Now, that's her only work of fiction, which to me is amazing because fiction is not anything like nonfiction. So for her in her 70s to go, I think I'm going to write a fiction novel. Yeah. Is is amazing, first of all. And can you tell us about, you know, the story about how this book came about? Because you were one of the editors. I was. Well, I mean, all I remember really, this was so long ago, um, was she, oh, I don't know why my lights just went out. <laughs> uh, can you still see me? Hello. A little bit. <laughs> we had um, technical difficulties, <laughs> so we were going to yeah. go live, and then we said, yeah. okay, we're going to do Zoom, and then yeah, my light. lost the no. light. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> I'm in the library because my, uh, I knew my internet was unstable. So I thought I would come oh, yeah, to someplace. Oh yeah, because you live little... in the woods. Yeah. Which yeah. is, which is, um, which is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I love where I live. Those, they have all those tree spirits around you. Right. But anyway. anyway. Um, so yeah, Man Called Friday. Um, she, when I would come visit, she really loved her son, Chris, and she thought it was a really fun thing to do. What, what a really fun thing to do was to get together with him and brainstorm Friday's adventures. Um, and, you know, they would play canasta and figure out what he was going to do next and how it was going to go and all that sort of stuff. So, oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's interesting because she never said anything about Chris in like the um oh. forward to the like the uh, dedication in the book. He was very much part of that. They they were like brain share. I might change the I might change the acknowledgement. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he should yeah. be in there. He should be. Now this is the nice thing about the modern technology. I don't have like a thousand copies sitting in a box somewhere, me selling out of the back of my car. I just create a new PDF and upload it to Amazon and it's instantly fixed. Perfect. That's easy. I, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing is that um, she never had any of her stuff um translated and apparently she wanted to do audiobooks but never did but this one's now on audible and i've translate i'm translating it into spanish she was working with somebody in south america i thought to oh i never found anything in her notes okay to translate but maybe that never came to pass i don't know oh that's interesting see i'm always finding out stuff peter people, somebody peter somebody people are so layered now this is something we we haven't talked about because she was a little um off the wall sometimes like i i'll i'll start it with this the email i got one day i got an email from somebody and they were very upset that in 
Th this book, no, which way am I going? That book. She writes about how she struggled with not immediately loving her second baby, Dyke, firstborn son. Like, so your mom was the oldest, and then it was Dyke. And then it was Chris. So the three, she had three kids and that was the order, but she wasn't immediately enamored like most moms are with their children. And she struggled with this for years. And she wrote about this experience about of having a shadow and that experience. Someone was extremely upset that she was a human, <laughs> messy human <laughs> like all of us, but she, was bold enough to even write about it. Like most people aren't even willing to let anybody see anything shadowy or dark or messy mm -hmm. or human. Mm -hmm. And we know she was just like everybody else. Right. Yes, we know. <laughs> Do you have any, well, I want almost to say funny because like when we look back at our lives at some of our messy stuff, it just becomes comical, but not at the time. Right, right, right. I often wonder how, he survived his childhood, you know, with, with that, you know, with a mother who didn't really <laughs> nurture him, like, you know, like a, um, well, maybe he got like, it from his dad. Yeah, maybe. I should ask him. We should ask him. Yeah. We should ask him. I, he, 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 uh, he likes it when I, I, I call and I ask him questions and he tells me all kinds of stories. He's actually highly intuitive, but he won't admit it. He, he talks about how he um he knew because she writes about her car accident because yeah that's the other thing just because you're plugged into the field doesn't escape you from human experiences and how she nearly died in the car accident and um for some reason in the middle of that night he just woke up at three o'clock and went and just stood in front of the phone and then like a few minutes later it rang and it was um, Pat, his dad, calling to say, oh, we've been in an accident. Your mom's in surgery. <laughs> and he just knew. He just got up and went to the phone. There was no cell phone. This was like, what, the 60s, mid-60s. It mm -hmm. just taken the Silva method and used the glove anesthesia technique to stop mm. the bleeding. Yeah, yeah. If you want to, you want to, if you, anybody wants, uh, needs a, um, an endorsement for, for the techniques and how they work, I can't think of a better one. Right, right, right. She stopped the flow. Yeah, yeah. Because you're well, yeah. Because she'd already had your mom, so you could have still been here, but you wouldn't have had any experiences with her. Right. So yeah, that's yeah. it's amazing how that worked. Clearly, not an accident. She met Jose Silva. Right. right. But uh, do you have any quirky memories of her being like a messy human? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, messy. Yeah, she was, you know, she, like you said, she didn't have the filters. And so she, she had some cutting remarks mm. toward, you know, family members, including me, um, that I was kind of like, you know, that's not very nice. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, she was who she was. So she must have got it from somewhere it must have come from her you know and that's how she operated because that's how she learned to operate I don't know that might have come from her upbringing because I was in her story she talks about you know growing up in an extremely religious background and they were probably very cutting themselves and no matter how much you grow as an adult I don't think you 100% lose some of that and maybe that's what she kept with her her you know those opinions and yeah I don't know I mean I remember going out to visit um in South Dakota the family the, the Dashels out there but um but not you know I don't I was too little to get involved in the family dynamics and all that so I I don't really know but but I you know just from reading some of the stories that she wrote um it sounds like they dismissed her. They they tried to hide her gifts because uh, that because it was so out of the norm. So yeah, well, I mean, when 
just like you said, you kind of knew right at five, she knew about the same age because she could already see into the fourth dimension. And her mom was mortified. <laughs> yeah. So your great grandmother was mortified. Right. You can only imagine because her mother was what in her 20s in like the 1920s. So that's a totally different time and place. And, you know, so now it's 1930 and your six year old is saying they see right. spirits, yeah. people in the room. <laughs> Well, okay, so now you what you're just saying reminds me of uh, when we came back, when we when we left Iran, we came and we, we were temporarily living with my grandmother who lived on Druid Drive. And in the room there, I could not sleep because I could see men wandering around. And I don't know if there was, if the house was built on a, a graveyard or or there was a portal there, I don't know, but I could not sleep. Um, and I was terrified. And I would ask my mother, and she, she would dismiss it. <laughs> and then I would ask my grandmother for help. And she gave me, um, you know, the Archangel Michael prayer, mm. um, which didn't help. I don't know why that didn't help. Um, oh, that's interesting. Archangel Michael. But um but but I ended up shutting it down myself. I was just so desperate for relief to be able to sleep because it was affecting school and you know I was just exhausted for months. Um, oh, and so that's been my journey again to open up my third eye. So oh, so yeah. it wasn't a temporary shutdown. It was like I'm shutting this down. I don't want to see this. I got to be able to sleep. Yeah. Oh, so now you're like, okay, now I want to open it back up. And it's like chipping away at a cement wall. <laughs> I get it. Well, I mean, I've got, I've got elements of it, but I don't, I, you know, I don't see like I saw, I used to see, which is fine. Cause I get intuitive hits different ways. So. Yeah. I, I find I'm intuitive, but I do it with business. Like if, if you ask me about, you know, your path and your spirit guides and what, no, I don't have a clue. If you say to me, Hey, what should I have on my website? I could probably design it in my head and say, these are the things you need to feature. Oh, I might consult on you about that then. <laughs> yeah. So that's for some reason, I think that's the other thing I have a really I have a business mind and I don't think Helen had that at all because Dyke told me some stories of how she was trying to run the business. It's a good thing he, she made him president. That's all I'm going to say. She was the it creative probably force. Saved them. She was definitely the creative force. Yeah. Yeah. Creative is great, but sometimes you need um, concrete Balance. earth school, you know, we we are on earth school and I say you still need to have the books done because the accountant <laughs> wants them right because we're here in 3d right well that's why you collaborate with other people so yeah they they say um sell your strengths buy your weaknesses yeah right that's so true. if that's I true. I want to learn how to you know participate in a drum circle because I've never actually been to one and they, I've seen them they look amazing then I would come to an expert which is you right and then that's how it works you go to yeah, yeah. who knows whatever it is you want you go find the person who that's their passion and that's their sole purpose and part of the mosaic of the world and that's what makes it beautiful we need right. all the pieces yes we need all of us we're all integral part we're all integral parts that's so is there anything any other memory or story or anything even from your own life that you think would be good to share uh, nothing's coming to mind really um that's okay we we're always here so we can talk in six months or we can do a live stream when I come to Arkansas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, she was, she was a, a, um, a wonderful influence, um, despite 
some of the little Barbie bar not Barbie but Barb the thing she had yeah. going <laughs> yeah barbed barbed, barbed comments yes um but uh but i i and i've done some ancestral work to clear the past and so that i can receive more of the gifts without shutting them down so um yeah i i am just i am happy with where i came from and who was in my family so we know it good. worked because you did some ancestral work and then I contacted you and you're like what <laughs> <laughs> like, it's been, there's been nothing and then all of a sudden I like, know little open yeah yeah it was cool yeah it was it was cool that and um it just popped out of my head there was one more thing Oh well, it'll come. Oh, well. It'll come after we hang up on the right. <laughs> that's Murphy's law, right? Right there. Yeah. But YouTube that's law. yeah, that's how we connected. And Dyke had said to me, "You really need to talk to Melissa, or in this case, Satya. He he still calls you Melissa. Yeah. And the family family has a hard time switching. That's okay. Yeah. And um, and then. I kept asking for your number. Well, God bless the cell cell numbers that never change because I ended up. So when I got the balance of the your grandmother's business files, um, her address book was in there. And I thought, I wonder. I look you up. There's a cell number here. Hmm, let's try. Sure enough, you hadn't changed it. So that's when I I uh I so got here we are. you. Thankfully, yeah. yeah, you hadn't changed your number. But yeah, I had kept asking him for I don't know how long. And then so it was only when I had that instinct. So it's it's interesting because um one of my favorite teachers, his name is Robert Ohato. He says, live as if you're the answer to someone else's prayer. And so like you cleared that out, and then all of a sudden I went, Oh, I should check the address book. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. where did that thought come from? You know what right. I mean? Right. Like that's how we're, when you're plugged into the field, you pick up on those things. Right. And then you connect. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's cool. I love it. <laughs> oh, I know what it was. I know what the last thing I wanted to say was we had talked before we started recording and that you, this is how I think you're connected to Helen. She changed her name. And I not a hundred percent what know what year I haven't figured that out, um, but she added the e to change numerology from two, a two to a seven, and you can see how it's changed. And she passed in twenty ten, and you got your name Sacha in twenty ten. Yes, so I did. It's almost like you. She changed. And then when she left, you changed and kind of carried on that legacy of the spiritual identity. That's very cool that you picked that up. Yeah. And I was like, maybe <laughs> I'm I didn't, I didn't I even think. pick that up. I don't know. I even... <laughs> maybe I just see things in a different way. Yeah. But I saw that and I went, oh, this makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. And it's so wonderful and I love that you, it's almost like a family tradition now. Change to the name. spiritually change your name. Yeah. See what my daughters do. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting because there's there's a long journey ahead. So it'll be interesting to see where, where they take it. Or even your, um, I, I assume you have nieces and nephews. I do, yeah. So it mm -hmm. could be could be any of them. Right. It could right. be any of them on that path. Right. So thanks so much for coming. And, yeah. and I'm so glad that we got to meet. Yes, for sure. Thanks for reaching out. I love how these, when you, one makes a choice and you, you see what doors open and who gets to come through them. And there's people that I never would have thought would be in my life that have showed up and I'm so, I feel so blessed. So thank you so much. <laughs>
for Thank being you. my friend, <laughs> my new friend. Yeah. And uh, and I get to go visit and hang out and uh, and learn from because you have skills I sure don't. And Happy that's, to share. Uh, that I love share. and we can share. Yeah. Thank well, you thank so you much. so much. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody.